All right, so I finally figured it out. There are three methods in streaming, either with your Elgato capture cards or without your Elgato capture cards. I'm gonna go over all three of them and tell you what my best recommendation is for you, depending on your setup and depending on what you have available. So number one, the Elgato HD60S. A lot of you already have this, so you guys might just wanna stick with this. I'm gonna go over the entire setup with you for you to get the display capture along with the audio. You're just gonna need one extra thing that you may or may not have. All you're gonna need is a mic. So if you have any type of mic lying around, it can be cheap like this one over here, which was probably about like $20. I'll leave a link to this in the description below, but you can even get the Blue Yeti. Any mic available, you can get all the audio, including your audio, the game audio, and the display. And you got the whole full streaming setup and it's pretty cheap let's go ahead with the setup i'm gonna draw a quick diagram for you to show you what the setup looks like and how you guys should have it configured for you to get this entire setup to work with the elgato hd 60s so this is exactly what i have set up to get voice chat game chat party chat and display capture all you need over here is probably a mic if you guys don't have one lying around you guys can get cheap mics that are 30 dollars that do the job or you can get this blue yeti mic that i have in this image right here it costs about 50 dollars it's a great investment it's a really good mic so you got the HDMI cable going from the PS5 to the import of your Elgato. And then you're gonna have your HDMI cable going from the out port into your monitor. So that's simple. And then what you're gonna do is have your USB cable that came with your Elgato device going from your Elgato to the PC, which you're gonna be streaming on. And then you're gonna have a mic connected to your PC to get your voice chat audio. And then this is a unique part of the setup. You're gonna have a 3.5 millimeter aux cable going from the line in port of your Elgato HD D60S into your controller and this will get your entire game chat whatever's going on in the game so that's it for the wiring setup now what you're gonna want to do in the PS5 is this you're gonna want to have your main account and have a dummy account so check it out I'm gonna start this all over turn off PS5 okay I have two accounts here this is my main account and this is a dummy account so what I'll do is I'll log into my main account using the controller that I'm gonna use to play the game. So which is my PS5 controller, I'm just gonna press X here, it'll log in. And you're gonna have your headphones connected as you normally would. Whether you're using a USB wireless transmitter connected to the PS5, or you're using a aux cable coming out of your headset going into the controller of the PS5. Just connect your headset as you normally would. So that's the first step right now. You just log into your main account once you have all this set up. The controller that you see in this diagram will be here, right here. You're gonna wanna make sure it's connected just like this. And then what you're gonna wanna do is, let me go back to the game screen. You're gonna want to press the PlayStation button. I can't show you the controller right now because this cable's kinda short, but you're gonna wanna press the PlayStation button, which I'm gonna do right now, on the DualShock 4 controller that I have connected. And it's gonna ask you who's using this DualShock 4 controller. And you're gonna set it to your dummy account. So boom, set it to this account. That's it, that's all you have to do. And then you can place your controller way inside the drawer, put it aside. Now all you have to do is pretty much use this controller over here. So basically on your main account, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to go to settings you go to sounds and you're gonna want to make sure your input device is the headset that you're using which is my Arctis Pro wireless over here that's your input device then you're gonna want to go to your output audio set your audio to your headset in my case the Arctis Pro Wireless. And you're gonna wanna do all audio over here. So right now I'm getting sound out of here and out of the Elgato going into my stream. So we're just gonna go to the dummy account and see what the sound settings look like over there. You go over here, you switch users, and we're gonna switch to the dummy account. We're gonna go to the settings and then we're gonna go down to the sound settings and the input device should be set to none. However, the output device should be set to the headphones connected to your controller. You don't want to set it to your headsets and you don't want to set it to the HDMI device TV. You want to set it to headphones connected to your controller. And then obviously you're going to want to have all audio over here. And that's all. So if it's not working for you, you just want to make sure that your dummy account sound settings are set just like that. So right now you should basically have your game volume and everything coming out to the stream and you can listen to it on your OBS or whatever capture software you're gonna use. All right, so as you can see over here, as I'm talking right now, you see the mic moving next to my name. That's how you know the microphone inside my headphones is working so the people in the game can hear me. However, the stream can't hear me. And the only way the stream can hear you is if you use that mic that I told you about that's connected to your PC. So as you can see over here, you're gonna wanna have an external mic strictly for your voice chat so as you're gaming and everything and talking your audience on your twitch or whichever platform you're using for streaming can also hear your voice and that's how you set it up with the Elgato HD60S so here are the OBS settings 
I hope you guys can hear me properly. I don't know why my mic is kind of acting up right now. All right, so I'm gonna have this inception looking thing because I'm trying to get my own display capture going. So it's gonna like show a mirror of multiple screens over here. I'm gonna have my PlayStation screen over here so you guys can see it. All right, so step number one is create a new scene. So you go to the scene tab, you hit the addition button and you're gonna create a new scene. You're gonna call it whatever you'd like. So I already did this over here, so I'm gonna press cancel. I'm gonna call it PS5 test. And I have these sources over here added because these are needed to do my display capture and for you guys to hear me with the mic. So without these two, you guys would not be able to see my OBS settings. All right, so step number two, you're gonna to wanna to add a source. And the source you're gonna add is audio input capture. So you're gonna call it whatever you'd like and this is going to be your microphone. So I already added the mic. All you're going to do is type mic in, press OK, and you're going to be greeted to this screen over here. So what you're going to do is you're going to choose the microphone you have attached to your PC. In my case, I have the microphone 3 Realtek Audio. I'm going to click on that and press OK. Your mic is going to show over here. And as you can see, as I'm talking right now, it's moving. So that's going to be your voice chat that your audience is going to hear. Step number two, you're going to want to add another source. And this time, this source is going to be a video capture device. And over here, you're going to want to add your capture device. So in my case, I already added the Elgato. So I'm just going to press cancel. Once you add the Elgato source, you're going to be greeted to this screen over here. And in the devices, you're going to want to choose Game Capture HD 60 Video. Not Elgato Game Capture HD. Choose Game Capture HD 60 as video number one. For some reason, whenever you choose Elgato Game Capture HD, it has some nuances with audio. Once you choose that, you press OK. And there you go. You have your Elgato audio over here, and you have your Elgato Game Capture over here. So this is my game capture. I just minimized it. You guys see I can also maximize it or minimize it. So I have it minimized so you guys can see what's going on. Alright, so step number three. So before you turn your PlayStation 5 on, you're going to want to have your entire setup like I showed you before. So once you have that setup going, all you're going to do is turn your PlayStation 5 on and sign into your main account. So right now I'm getting audio from my headset. However, we're not getting any audio on the OBS. So as you can see, this is getting no audio. If I'm moving left and right, no audio. So the next thing you have to do is go to your second controller that you're going to connect to your dummy account. You're gonna turn your second controller on. So right now I'm gonna hit the PlayStation button on the second controller and you're gonna sign into your dummy account with it. And as soon as you sign in, you see the game audio come into effect. So as you can see, if you move right and left, your OBS audio also increases and decreases. That's how you know it's working. And if you're still not getting any audio over here, what you're gonna have to do is make sure you have the Elgato Game Capture HD software downloaded. Once you have that downloaded, you're gonna wanna open that up and you're gonna wanna go to the setting icon right over here. And over here, you're gonna wanna change this from HDMI to analog. Make sure this says PlayStation 4 for the meantime, and then you press OK. And that will port over your audio for your game. You have your voice audio for your audience, and you also have your game audio playing. So there you have it. That is the OBS settings for the PlayStation 5. And if you wanna use a native Elgato game capture software, it's the same thing. You gotta make sure all this is set up just like so. Once you do that, you wanna make sure your commentary button is on because that will get your microphone audio coming in right and then choose your microphone and as you can see as I'm talking this is moving and then you also have your game audio coming in so if I move the screen left and right you'll see it goes up and down for whatever reason it shows low over here but if you're actually recording it's actually a normal sound level so there you have it this is how you use the native Elgato HD60S software and it's pretty much the same thing for Streamlabs and your other game capture softwares now remember the one downside about the Elgato HD60S is that you're not going to get the 120 frames per second that is promised with the PS5. So if we go back right now to the settings tab and we go to a screen and video, we are only getting 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. So if you're going to want to get the 120 hertz, we're going to have to go with method number two, and that is using the Elgato 4K60 Pro. So it's basically the exact same wiring, except you're using an Elgato 4K60 Pro. So if I were to draw this up for you right now, it would look something like this. So as you can see over here, it's pretty much the same thing as the Elgato HD60S. So over here, I have the 4K60 Pro pretty much merged into the desktop PC over here because that's how you install it. It goes into the PCIe slot. So what you're going to want to do is take the HDMI cable going from the PS5 into the in port of the 4K60 Pro. And, and then, then you take the HDMI, HDMI going from the out port of the 4K60 Pro going into your monitor. Now what you're going to want to do to get the gameplay is you're going to want to connect your 
your PS5 controller into your line in port of your PC. All right, so the USB cable is still gonna be connected to your PS5, so your PS5 can recognize your DualShock 4, so it's charging at all times while you're playing as well, so it doesn't die out. But you're gonna press the PlayStation button and you're gonna set this controller to your dummy account. And then you're gonna take your mic, you're gonna put that into the mic in port of the PC. And that's how you're gonna get all the audio. You're gonna get your voice chat audio, the game chat audio, all of it. All right, so that's it. That's the setup with the 4K60 Pro. And the benefit of having this, you get the 1920 by 1080 at 120 hertz. So you get the 120 frames per second that PS5 advertises. And that's the thing about this console. Once you get this console, you have to pretty much upgrade almost everything that you have. If you have a 60 hertz monitor, you have to upgrade your monitor. You have to upgrade your capture card, things like that if you're gonna go the capture card route. And the third and last way, which is the least versatile way, is buying the PlayStation camera. I think it costs about $60 and the native PlayStation 5 Twitch software, it's much nicer than the PlayStation 4. You don't see any sidebars, the screen doesn't minimize anymore. So essentially it's like it's not there. You connect your PS5 camera as a webcam and you just set it to broadcast and that's it. You got a simple stream. I think it's a pretty quick way to stream daily because all you have to do is turn your PS5 on, hold the little share button right here. You press that button and that's it, you're streaming. This is the most minimalistic and least versatile way of streaming because you can't really customize your stream as you would in OBS or Streamlabs. So you can't have things like the stream banners if somebody follows you or you know subscribes to you. There's like a whole banner that comes up. You can't have things like that. It's just a simple thing. You're streaming. You get your content out there. It works. And that's all that matters. So I feel like that's the easiest way and the fastest way to stream. So there you have it. Those are the three best methods in streaming with the PS5. And before you go, I'll be announcing a big giveaway in my next video. I'm giving away my PS5. So in my next video, I'll go over how you can get yourself a free PlayStation 5 just by doing a few simple things. So be ready for that. If you want the PS5 before Christmas, be sure to subscribe and put on post notifications so you can get alerted when I post my next video talking about the details on how to get this free disc edition PlayStation 5. If you found this video useful, subscribe and drop a like below. Leave a comment if you have any questions, I get to them pretty quick. With that being said, I'll see you in the next one.